Hi, and welcome back to my series of videos for General Chemistry 2. In today's video, we'll start putting together all the pieces we've learned about in the past few videos, about acids and base dissociation reactions, pH, and rice tables. You might be wondering where we're going with all this information. One of the most important things we'll be learning about is buffers. As we'll see in a later video, a buffer is a solution that helps us control the pH. And buffers are crucial in all areas of real-world chemistry and biology, whether you're performing chemistry research, culturing cells in a biology lab, or preparing IV solutions in a medical setting. To get there, we'll start today by delving more deeply into pH and how we determine it for different kinds of acids and bases. We've calculated the pHs of acids and bases before, back in video 20, but there's a lot more we can do with it. First, let's look at a few examples with strong acids and bases. As you saw in an earlier video, calculating the pH of a single strong acid is pretty simple. For example, suppose we have a solution of hydrobromic acid with a concentration of 6.52 times 10 to the minus 9 molar. What's the pH? All we have to do is plug the molarity into the pH formula, and we find that the pH is 8.19. Calculating the pH of a strong base is almost as easy. For example, suppose we have a solution of barium hydroxide with a concentration of 5.29 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. What's the pH? This time we have a base, so we'll look at the concentration of hydroxide, not H+. That means we'll start by calculating the pOH, not the pH. You might be tempted to just plug 5.29 times 10 to the minus 5 into the formula, but be careful. I've made this example a little trickier than that. Did you catch it? A barium hydroxide molecule has two hydroxides in it. That means the concentration of hydroxide will be two times the concentration of the barium hydroxide molecules. That's 1.058 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. That's what we'll use in our formula, which gives us a pOH of 3.98. We're not quite done. Remember, the question asked us for the pH, not the pOH. You might remember from video 20 that the pH and the pOH always add up to 14. That means the pH in this case will be 10.02. So, we've tried calculating the pH for a single strong acid or strong base. This time, let's try calculating it for a mixture. As we'll see, this is a little bit harder, and we'll bring in the definition of molarity, which we haven't needed so far. For example, suppose we combine 25.0 milliliters of 3.21 times 10 to the minus 2 molar nitric acid, and 65.0 milliliters of 8.77 times 10 to the minus 4 molar hydriodic acid. What will be the pH of the resulting mixture? We'll use the same formula as before, but this time we have a problem. In order to use it, we'll first need to calculate the molarity of H plus ions in the mixture. What we can't do is calculate the pH of each solution separately and then take an average. Remember, the pH has a logarithm in it, and logarithms don't average out that way. Besides, we have different volumes for each acid, so the two solutions don't contribute equally to the pH of the mixture. What we need to do instead is to calculate the concentration of the mixture. To do that, we just need to remember what molarity actually is. As you might remember, it's the moles of solute over the liters of solution. Let's determine the moles first. In this case, our solute is the H plus ion, so we'll determine the moles of H plus in each of the two solutions we've got. In the first solution, the molarity is 3.21 times 10 to the negative 2, and the volume is 25.0 milliliters, which is 0 0.0250 liters. Solving for the moles gives us 8.025 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of H plus in solution 1. We'll perform a similar calculation for the second solution. This time, we have 5.701 times 10 to the minus 5 moles of H plus. Notice that the first solution was nitric acid, and the second solution was hydriodic acid. But that's okay. The solute we're interested in is the hydrogen plus, which both acids produce. 
When we add the moles of H plus for both solutions, we get a total of 8.595 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. To find the pH, we need the molarity of the mixture, which is moles per liter. We have 8.595 times 10 to the minus 4 moles, and the volume is the combined volumes of the two solutions. We have 25 mils for solution 1 and 65 for solution 2, for a total of 90 milliliters. That's 0 0.0900 liters. So, that finally gives us the molarity of H+, which is 9.55 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. When we use that in the pH formula, we find out that the pH of the mixture is 2.02. .02. To calculate the pH of a mixture of strong bases, you'd use a similar method, but you'd be calculating the molarity of hydroxide instead of H+, so you'd find the pOH before you found the pH. So far, we've just been looking at strong acids and bases, but as we've seen before, there are far more weak acids and bases than strong ones, and those have plenty of applications in the lab. Let's try calculating the pH of a weak acid. For example, suppose we have a 0 0.100 molar solution of iodic acid, HiO3. What's its pH? This sounds pretty simple. At first you might think we could just plug 0 0.100 molar into the pH formula. But that's not right. You might remember that when strong acids or bases dissociate in water, it's an irreversible reaction. That means that if a strong acid has a concentration of 0 0.100 molar, that'll also be the concentration of H plus ions in the solution. But for a weak acid, that's not true. The reverse reaction happens at the same time as the forward reaction, so all the acid molecules are never completely dissociated into H plus ions. So, how can we find the pH? As you might remember from back in videos 16 and 17, the way to find out the amount of product like H plus in a reversible reaction is to use a rice table. If you don't remember how rice tables work, it would be a good idea to go back and look at those two videos now, because we're going to use them a lot in the rest of this video and in class. So here's our rice table. From the last video, you should know that the acid dissociation reaction for iodic acid is this. The first thing we need is the initial concentrations. The problem tells us that we have 0 0.100 molar iodic acid. The iodic acid will dissociate, but before it does, the H plus and iodate ion concentrations are both zero. That'll usually be the case for weak acids and bases. Whenever a problem tells you that a weak acid or base has a certain concentration, that's its initial concentration before the dissociation has happened. Right now, we don't know how much the concentrations will change, but we do know that the concentration of each product will go up by the same amount, because the reaction tells us that they're in a one-to-one -one ratio. For now, let's just say that they go up by an amount x, and we'll figure out what that is later. Since the reactant is also in a one-to-one -one ratio with the products, its concentration will change by the same amount, but it'll decrease, so the change for it is minus x. That means our final concentrations are 0 0.100 minus x for the iodic acid and x for the H plus and iodate ions. In order to get the pH, we need to know the H plus concentration, which is x. How do we get that? If you've watched video 17, you know that we use the equilibrium expression. For this reaction, we have Ka is equal to the products over the reactants, which is this expression. To solve the equation, we need to know what the value of Ka is, which we get from Appendix D of your textbook. If you look there, you'll find out that it's 0 0.17. Now we can use this equation to find x. The numerator is the same as x squared. Next, I'll get rid of the denominator by multiplying the right side by 0 0.100 minus x. Now I'll move everything to the left side of the equation, which gives us x squared plus 0.17x minus 0.017 equals 0. 
This is a quadratic equation, so we'll use the quadratic formula to find the solution. As I mentioned back in video 17, please feel free to use a programmable calculator to do this the fast way. When you do, you find out that x has two possible values, 0 0.0706 or negative 0.241. As usual, one of these two answers must be impossible, and in this case it's the negative number. We can't have a negative concentration, so that means the H plus concentration is 0 0.0706 molar. When we use that in the formula for pH, we find out that the pH is 1.15. Let's try another example. In the previous problem, we looked up the value of Ka in the appendix. This time, let's try the reverse. We'll use the pH to find the Ka of an acid that's not in the appendix. Here's how. Suppose we have a 0 0.200 molar solution of dichloroacetic acid and it has a pH of 1.18. What's the value of Ka, the acid dissociation constant? Believe it or not, this is actually an easier question than the one we just answered. We'll start by writing down the rice table. For the reaction, we have the acid on the left and H plus and the other ion on the right. As we saw in the last problem, the molarity given in the question is the initial concentration of the acid before it dissociates. So that goes up here. The initial concentrations of the products are both zero. It might seem like we're stuck now. We don't know how much the concentrations change, and it might seem like we also don't know any of the final concentrations. But we actually do. We're told that the pH is 1.18, and we can use that to find the final H plus concentration. Here's the pH formula. We'll plug in 1.18 for the pH. As you might remember from video 20, we get the H plus concentration by moving the negative sign to the left and then making the left side the exponent on 10. That gives us a concentration of 0 0.0661 molar. So that's the final H plus concentration, which we'll put in the rice table. That tells us that the change in the concentration was positive 0 0.0661 for H plus. Since all the reactants and products are in a one-to-one -one ratio, that's also the change for the other compounds, except that the reactant is decreasing instead of increasing. So now we can find all the final concentrations. We get 0 0.1339 for the dichloroacetic acid and 0 0.0661 for the other ion. Now we can figure out the value of Ka. Here's the equilibrium expression. When we plug in the final concentrations, we find out that Ka is 3.26 times 10 to the minus 2. Let's try one last example, this time with a base. Suppose we have a 15.1 molar solution of ammonia. What'll be its pH? This really isn't too much different from the examples we just did. We'll start by writing the rice table. We start with the reaction. Remember, this one is a base, not an acid, so we'll have water as one of the two reactants, and hydroxide as a product. The question tells us that the initial concentration of ammonia is 15.1 molar, and the concentrations of the products are zero. What about the water? You might remember that when we write the equilibrium expression, we don't include solids and liquids. That means that when we write the equation for Kb for this reaction, we're going to leave out the water, so we don't really need to know what its concentration is, and we can leave that column blank. Just like last time, we luck out and have a one-to-one -one ratio for all the reactants and products. That means the change in the concentration for each of the two products will be positive x, and the change for the reactants will be negative x. And that gives us these final concentrations. We'll plug those into our equilibrium expression. When we look in appendix D, we find that the value of Kb is 1.80 times 10 to the minus 5. To solve the equation, first we'll simplify the numerator to x squared. Next, we'll get rid of the denominator by multiplying both sides of the equation by 15.1 minus x. 
Finally, we'll move everything to the left side of the equation. This is another quadratic equation, so we can use a calculator or the quadratic formula to solve for x. When we do, we get x equals either 0.0165 or negative 0.0165. The negative number is impossible, so we use the other result. That means the final concentration of hydroxide is 0.0165 molar. We can use this in our formula. Remember, this is a base, so what we just calculated is the hydroxide calculation, not the H+. So we use the formula for pOH, not pH. That gives us a pOH of 1.78. To get the pH, we subtract this from 14 which finally gives us a pH of 12.22. Calculations like the ones we just did are very common for professional chemists. You'll use them often in a lab setting when performing research, and as I mentioned earlier, we'll see these kinds of calculations again soon when we talk about buffers. But that's enough new material for now. You've learned some valuable skills in this video, so we'll spend some time on them in class and on the homework you should definitely try to get good at these kinds of calculations before the next test, which is probably coming up pretty soon. But until next time, have a good week.